Good morning, my beautiful followers. How is everyone doing this morning? It's a beautiful Saturday morning after Valentine's Day. After Valentine's Day, the most romantic day of the year, supposedly. Uh, I don't believe that's true, but there is romance in the air. There is an energy in the air uh, on Valentine's Day. But the problem being is that oftentimes that energy quickly, quickly leaves right after Valentine's Day. It quickly leaves. And if things don't go right on Valentine's Day, a lot of times we put on our boxing gloves. We put on our boxing gloves and so many fights start because of this holiday. I can tell you that through my years of doing sex and relationship coaching, how much, even in solo, you know, even for singles, uh, Valentine's Day tends to stir so much within us because it points out, it takes a flashlight and points out in our relationships where things aren't where we want them to be. It points out where we're not getting the sex, where we're not getting the attention, where we're not getting the love that we truly desire. And it really does highlight for those of us in relationships, we're all in relationship, but in an intimate relationship where things aren't working. And so often there is massive fighting right after Valentine's Day, right after Valentine's Day. So we go from the most romantic day of the year to the true boxing day of the year. It's not after Christmas, it's the day after Valentine's Day. Because so many people get into fights right after Valentine's Day. And we think of fighting in relationships. I can't tell you how many people I've had in my office, how many clients, uh, couples, and they'll go, we don't fight, we don't fight. I'll get as somebody who is single and they'll, have a new relationship and they're like, it's amazing, we never fight, we've never had an argument. And I'm like, that's actually an issue, that's actually an issue. There is a difference between having an argument and putting on your boxing gloves. When we put on our boxing gloves, we are going for knockout of that other person. There is no love in the fighting. There is no love in that fighting, but having arguments in relationship, all our relationships, but especially, especially our intimate relationships is required. Because in truth, we're not always going to have the same opinion as some somebody. We are all our, we all have egos and those egos will arise. And the truth is when I see people who don't fight with their partners, usually there is so much stuff down so much really rooted in what they're not saying. Their throat chakras are closed up. They're having physical issues and their relationship is like this. You do not want a relationship that is up and down and you're always fighting and it's always, passion can be great, but if your passion is going from like lovey-dovey to you guys are, are wanting to kill each other, that's not a healthy relationship either. But in truth, you must fight in relationship. If you don't fight, if you don't have those arguments, those conversations really it comes down to, you're not speaking your truth. You're not getting to know that other person. You guys aren't seeing all of each other. You're not truly seeing all of each other. There is some hold back. That's not saying that you have to fight all the time, but fighting or disagreements at the very least not saying putting on your boxing gloves kind of fighting is required. But how do we not put on our boxing gloves and still have an argument? Because the arguments are important, the, the disagreements, the seeing things differently is so important. But how do we do this in a way that builds our relationship instead of kills our relationship? So usually I do not go through like, okay, do this and this, like the key points, Usually that's not my, my style on my videos, but I do feel like it's important today as so many people are dealing with their emotions and their struggles of, of realizing that, okay, maybe their relationship isn't perfect. Maybe there is something to fix. Maybe there is something in, within them that they want that they're not getting in the relationship. And how do we approach this? 
How do we get into those conversations, get into those, those disagreements while still doing it from a place of love, while still doing it from a place of wanting to connect with our partner? I will tell you in one second after my coffee break. That's all right. I'm back from my coffee break now. Uh, the first thing is really to fight fair, to fight fair. I cannot tell you how many people I talk to, especially you couples, and they will tell me that, and I say couples because couples usually have been with their partner for a longer period of time. I get my singles and they'll share with me like a disagreement they've had with their partner, but with singles, with people who are just dating, they haven't gotten down to that deeper level of collection, of collection of shit on this other person. They're, they still are, are oftentimes in that new relationship energy when you're still first dating somebody. So we're gonna go, go strictly on like you couples who have been seeing each other a while and, or are married for years. So fighting fair, fighting fair. And we think that we we're like, yeah, I fight fair, I fight fair. But so often we try to pull in, we kitchen, we do what therapists call kitchen sinking. We take everything that has ever happened in the relationship and we throw it at somebody in a fight. We're like, you left your socks on the floor. So I'm going to bring up the time when in 1985, when I asked you to pick a milk and you didn't. Seriously, we tend to go back, we get our into our egos, we get into that ego state and we go, well, they're always doing this. We throw out these always and you never. And when you ever get into saying always and never, you need to check yourself because there are very few, and I mean very, very few things that you can say always and never to, okay? I have always woken up in the morning. Yes, I've always woken up because I'm still here, I'm still alive. But beyond these simple life things in our, in our world, always and never does not apply. Always and never oftentimes does not apply. And we throw this at our partner. You never, you always do this. You, and we use these verb, this verbiage and then we take all the shit that we have not been speaking for years and we throw it at somebody. And that's not fighting fair. Because if you haven't verbalized what you need to verbalize, it's not the other person's fucking fault. It's not, okay? And I, I know I'm, a, I'm a, gonna stir people and they're gonna be like, but that's not fair, I didn't get, I couldn't tell them. Well, guess what? It is always your responsibility to verbalize something to somebody. If you're not fucking verbalizing, then you cannot blame somebody else for an issue you've been having with somebody maybe for years, but you're not verbalizing, you're not speaking about it, you're not, in, you're not stepping into that conversation. That is on you, that is on you, unfortunately. And that's a hard pill to swallow. And so oftentimes also, if we've had a conversation about something, that topic should be dropped. That topic should be dropped. Now, there are these times when it's like, I'm seeing this pattern. Well then, that's a conversation of like, okay, I've seen this pattern and my issue is the pattern that I'm seeing. But if you are just throwing stuff at your partner to hurt them, if you are taking moments, and this is a heart, this is a trust breaker, this is a relationship breaker. Uh, and I've had this happen in my own world and I've had, I know, other P I hear, I have friends and I, I have clients that they'll share an intimacy with somebody in an intimate moment. They'll have this, this deep conversation and it's like really vulnerable. It's like, okay, I'm going to step into my vulnerability here. I'm going to share this. And then it gets thrown back in somebody and the other person's like, no, no, I won't. I won't say anything like we're good. We're good. Like, thank you for sharing. And they go into this lovey to be like, no, thank you for sharing. That means so much that you're comfortable sharing with me, blah, blah, blah. And then it gets thrown back in their face. If you are doing this to your partner, to your intimate partner, if you are taking a moment of post-sex that they've shared something, that they're talking about their desires and you're twisting it 
and taking their vulnerability and twisting it and throwing at the, it at them later, that's not fighting fair. That is putting on your boxing gloves and trying to hurt somebody. And if you are doing that, you need to look at, do you really love this person? And why do you not, why, and if you say, yes, I do, then why are you trying to hurt that other person? What within you is, are you trying to pull up this fear, anger, resentment? Why are you trying to knock someone else out? What is it serving you? How is that serving you? And where is your ego at play, play there? Because tearing someone else's, else down for your benefit, that's not love. That's not love. So that's a you needing to do your own internal work. So looking at what you're, you're speaking to somebody else, staying on topic. So stay fighting fair, staying on the topic you need to be staying on. So if you're having an issue with, with something in the home dynamic, not bringing up sex and then bringing up money. No, like focusing in on the issue at hand. Uh, and then also listening, listening, listening. We so often don't, we listen, we are like, we hear, but we don't actually actively listen. And this is something that you have to choose to do. Nobody can make you do this. Nobody's gonna be like, you weren't actively listening. No, it's something that you only know. This is when you actually stop and breathe. And instead of coming up with all the things that you want to say to this other person. Instead of he listening to your ego and going like, well, I'm gonna say this when she's done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this and this and that. That's not listening. Actively listening, so really stopping and hearing the other person and letting them, them share whatever they need to share with you and breathing it in for a second and then going, I, I have a response, but I'm trying to breathe. And then, then sharing then coming up with your response, coming up with, with, you know, how you want to interact in this relationship or, or kind of, if somebody has, has said like, well, you've done this and you've done this, like really breathing it in. And instead of getting in our egos, like listening, what are they saying? What are they saying between the lines? Because in truth, our communication is not really that verbal. Our true communication is not that verbal. What we're verbalizing, there's so much going on between the lines of that verbalization. There is so much meaning that to be had. And so stopping and breathing and listening to what that person is truly trying to tell you and say and where their feelings and their emotions and their hurt is, because we are talking about disagreements or arguments and, and fighting right now, where is that hurt coming from? Uh, and then also on the other end, not taking on someone else's blame. Having each partner own their own shit and go in, and not going into this ego space where, where we allow ourselves to take on blame or we're blaming someone else for our feelings, our emotions. You made me feel. No, no. When now there is, there is, and when I was a therapist, we did I statements. I don't really love I statements uh, because if you, you use them as they're, they're supposed to be used, they can be very clinical and very just cold and not, not connected, but going like, you know, this action that brought this up in me is a beautiful way of sharing without going, you made me feel. No, when you, when you did that, this, is, this was what got triggered in me. That isn't a blaming statement. That is you going, I'm noting that this is mine to hold. These are my emotions, my, my feelings, but it is you and your actions that triggered that response in me. I note that. I note that they're mine. And so if you get into a blaming state, that is not, that is putting on the boxing gloves. That is not fighting from or disagreeing from a, a true loving space. That is trying to disagree from a controlling, egotistical, jealous, what, and you could throw on a whole bunch of other, other words onto that kind of place. It's noting that each person in a relationship's feelings, emotions are theirs, are theirs. And nobody else can control that. But we can still share our feelings. We can still share our emotions. 
I've seen people and couples who are, are very into spiritual kind of messages and things and, and, and are really working to have this healthy communication, sometimes get into this a little much where somebody will share a feeling and they're like, well, that's not my responsibility. Your feelings are not my responsibility. And there is also a, a level of being human and going, okay, I hear you. I hear you're having an emotion right now and having love and compassion for that emotion, for that feeling, for that sensation, for what's coming up. So let's not lose our hearts and our love in this as well. So yes, we can go into, yeah, this, you know, that's yours, this is mine, but we can still have compassion for each other while we go through our process. That is part of loving somebody and the purpose of having a disagreement and a fight in, in truth. Um, and that's one of my other points is really to, to see things with love and to ask for what you need, to ask for what you need in arguments, it should not just be blow up yelling at each other, but we should come to a place where we can ask for what we need and truly share our feelings. If you love somebody, then tuning it down, or toning it down, not tuning it down, toning it down a little bit and getting to a place where you can just have a good conversation about like, okay, here's what I'm needing. And even needing in the, in the, argument to begin with. So I know some people are very like, no, I need to deal with this now. And some people like to process things a little bit more. So if you need a break, if you need a moment going time out, I would like to table this for a couple hours. I need to process this. I need to, I'm getting in my ego and owning that though. You must have a time to come back. If you go, I can't deal with this right now. And you just leave the situation that is running away from your partner that is running away from your partner and not to do that but to step into more of a i just need a few moments or a few hours i need a day even but i would like to talk about this at this like could, do you have time tomorrow at five o'clock to to come back together because i do want to talk about this this is an important discussion for me i just want to do it in a healthy way i can tell you there is so much respect and going ah and love and going, I want to do this in a healthy way. And right now I'm in my ego. Right now I'm not there. Right now I need to process my stuff. Or I love you. And so I want to make sure that we do this in a way that is loving. That is a that is a way to step into a fight or disagreement lovingly instead of putting on your boxing gloves. Because guess what? We all get in our egos. It's a thing, we're human. There is no escaping our egos. But sometimes we can not, uh, we can circumnavigate some of that by simply taking a little bit of a pause in the conversation. But allowing your partner to understand, I just need a pause right now, I need a pause. Because if you just walk away, I can tell you that is retracting. That is gonna then be in a retracting energy and not a, I just need a pause energy. I need to, I need to do my inner work before I deal with the relational aspect. Otherwise it is a retraction energy and that retraction energy will stick in that other person's mind. Uh, and then yeah, asking for what you need, sharing your true feelings because when we're consistently holding back with our partners, with our intimate partners, with our relationships in general, but we are focused on intimate partners, when we're constantly pulling back out what we need, want to verbalize, what we need to verbalize, it causes dis-ease in our bodies and it actually kills the relationship. It takes some beautiful moments of learning and expansion away from that relationship. So today on the True Boxing Day, Take off those gloves and it's not that it's unhealthy to disagree, but don't step into unhealthy patterns in your disagreements. Do it from a place of love. Do it from a place of expanding the relationship instead of killing the relationship. So anyway, I feel complete on that. Hope you guys got some good, good tips, tricks, just knowledge, things to think about process. I'd love to hear about, about, uh, anything you got out of this. 
Outside of that, for me personally, I have some, I have Tuesday, I have my Aphrodite circles going on. So ladies, if you want into this circle and you're in the Plano Frisco area, then please sign up on my website. You can join us. It is a group of women. We get together. We do this sensuality and connection. This month is body image month. We're really going to deal with the body image pieces that were, that connect to our sexuality and our sensuality uh, because it's National Eating Disorders Awareness Week at the end of the month. And so that is something that's big to my heart and it's really important to me. And so we'll be focused in on that for this month. But these are monthly groups, so join me if you ever want to. But you must pre-register. This is not a pop-in event. This is a pre-registered event. Um, other than that, I have nothing that I really want to announce. There's a couple other things going on. I Like, I have my oral sex workshop coming up um, in a little less than a month. So if you want on, on in for that, then get in. You can go to my website. So everything else is really on my site. Um, and so, so yeah. Tomorrow I am doing Free Spirit Talks with the beautiful and wonderful Kendall Williams. So please join me tomorrow on Free Spirit Talks if you desire for a playful, fun conversation. So other than that, I hope you guys, oh, it's Saturday. That's not tomorrow. That's Monday. That's what happens when you work for yourself. You forget what day is what, so. All right, guys, you go and have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.